Welcome back. This week, NASA paused to remember those lost in the pursuit of spaceflight. NBC reports on the 20th anniversary of the Columbia shuttle crash and what NASA is working on now to move space exploration forward. NASA's Day of Remembrance honors the lives lost in pursuit of space exploration. But this year also marks the 20th anniversary of the 2003 Columbia Space Shuttle disaster. As the agency looks ahead to sending astronauts to the moon and Mars, NASA recognizes costly lessons learned along the way. Apollo 1 was supposed to be the first of several crewed flights NASA conducted in preparation for its first moon landing, but it never made it off the launch pad. On January 27, 1967, nearly a month before its planned launch, three crew members entered the Apollo control module for a launch countdown simulation that failed. As the crew sat inside debugging problems, an electrical fire broke out in the cockpit. As the astronauts struggled to open the hatch, the spacecraft ruptured. Roger Chaffee, Ed White and Gus Grissom died before rescuers could get them out. The important immediate project for space administration officials will be to find out what happened. Then and only then will they be ready for the next big step moving on toward manned flight in the Apollo spacecraft. The tragedy ultimately uncovered major design flaws, like an abundance of flammable materials inside the spacecraft. The Apollo missions ended in 1975 after six successful moon landings. And in 1981, the shuttle program began to deliver crew and cargo to the International Space Station and service the Hubble telescope. Over the course of 135 missions, orbiters Columbia and Challenger suffered catastrophic accidents with the loss of all crew members. On January 28, 1986, the Challenger shuttle was set to embark on a six-day mission. The seven-person crew included Krista McCullough, a New Hampshire teacher and the first American civilian to go to space. The launch day was unusually cold, and engineers warned that certain components were vulnerable to failure, but managers overruled them. Just before noon, Challenger took off. 73 seconds later, the space shuttle exploded. All seven crew members died as millions watched the tragedy unfold on live TV. The crew of the space shuttle Challenger honored us for the manner in which they lived their lives. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them. It was later determined that the O-rings, the rubber seals that kept hot gases inside the rocket booster, had become stiff due to the cold weather and caused a fuel leak. For over two years, the agency stopped sending astronauts into space as it redesigned several of its shuttle features. It also made changes to its management structure to improve future decision making. It wasn't until 2003 when the shuttle program would face another catastrophe on the Columbia spacecraft. The seven astronauts on Columbia made it to space just fine, but during the launch, it looked like a piece of foam insulation had broken off. The mission continued despite concerns from some engineers. On February 1st, minutes before Columbia was scheduled to land, NASA lost contact with the crew. Columbia Houston UHF comm check. It turned out the foam had punctured a hole in the left wing, ultimately destroying the shuttle upon reentry. The shuttle program was grounded until 2005, and the fuel tank was redesigned without the foam piece. Now NASA is embarking on its Artemis mission to return astronauts to the moon and eventually Mars. The agency plans to conduct regular missions to the moon to establish a base camp and use that research to inform future missions to Mars. And in the process, NASA says astronaut safety is top of mind. Safety is our responsibility. Every day at NASA, we have an opportunity, we have a duty to carry the memories of those that we lost and carry their dreams onward and upward. 